This video will discuss the origin for the equilibrium constant of a reaction of ideal gases. So from our previous video on extent of reaction, we defined our Gibbs energy change of reaction as the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy of the system with respect to the extent of reaction at a constant temperature and pressure. And this is also equal to a sum over all the products of the reaction of their stoichiometric coefficients times their chemical potential, minus the same thing for the reactants, the sum over all the reactants of their stoichiometric coefficients times chemical potential. So since our Gibbs energy is a state function, it just matters what the final and initial Gibbs energies are. So we have the final Gibbs energy is this expression for the products. The initial Gibbs energy is this expression for the reactants. So final minus initial gives us our Gibbs energy change during the reaction. All right, so we have the chemical potential of a given substance, which is an ideal gas. The chemical potential of that species is a function of temperature and pressure. So if the pressure of the gas is going to vary over the course of the reaction, it's going to vary if uh, the number of moles of it changes. So what we're going to see here is that the chemical potential as a function of temperature and pressure is equal to the standard chemical potential at that given temperature, which is the chemical potential at one bar of pressure, the standard pressure, plus RT, gas constant times temperature, times the natural log of the partial pressure of that given chemical species divided by the standard pressure, which is one bar. So if you're in Pascals, it's 10 to the fifth. If you're in atmospheres, it's slightly less than one atmosphere, just whatever one bar is and whatever unit of pressure that you're using. Okay, so if we take our uh, prototypical example reaction here, where we have reactants A and B going to products C and D, all of them are assumed to be in the gas phase, and we're going to assume that they're all ideal gases. They each have their own stoichiometric coefficient here, nu A, nu B, nu C, and nu D. So what is the Gibbs energy change of reaction that we're going to see here for our, or what's the Gibbs energy of reaction that we're going to see based off of the chemical potential of each of these here? So that's going to be a sum over all of the products of their stoichiometric coefficients times their chemical potential which is their standard chemical potential plus RT log pressure of that product divided by the standard pressure minus the same thing for the reactants sum over A and B of nu I times the standard chemical potential plus RT log uh, pressure of that individual reactant divided by the standard pressure. Okay, so if we take this same uh, expression and we rearrange it in terms of uh, some of these different terms that show up here, we get delta Rg, the Gibbs energy of reaction, equals, we have a sum of nu C times mu C naught. So for each species, we get its coefficient times the standard chemical potential, subtraction, subtraction for the reactants, addition for the products. And then we get terms that depend on R times T of the natural log of its pressure divided by the standard pressure times nu C. So what we can rearrange this into is what we're going to call the Gibbs energy of reaction equals the standard Gibbs energy of reaction plus RT times the natural log of the reaction quotient. So first off, the standard Gibbs energy. Standard reaction Gibbs energy is the sum over the products of their stoichiometric coefficient times their standard chemical potential. So the chemical potential at that temperature whenever the pressure of each of those products is equal to one bar, minus the sum over all the reactants of their coefficients times their chemical potential at that temperature when they are also at a pressure of one bar. So whenever each product is, whenever each species in the reaction is in its standard state, which for an ideal gas is going to be one bar of pressure. When everything is in the standard state, that's when we have the standard Gibbs energy of reaction. Okay, yep, I said that over there. So delta RG naught equals delta RG when PI equals P naught for all species in the reaction. 
Okay, so what about this reaction quotient here? So we can take these four different logarithms and we can actually add those together. So the natural log of, well, should we say a times the natural log of x equals the natural log of x to the a. So this is equal to pc over p naught to the power nu c. We can do that for all of these here. And then the natural log of 1 over x is plus the natural, sorry, the natural minus the natural log of x is equal to the natural log of 1 over x. So when we pull these in here, these can go on a denominator and these can go in a numerator. So what you'll find is that this expression is equivalent here whenever this reaction quotient equals. For each product, we have its pressure divided by the standard pressure to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient from correcting that uh, logarithm to bring that power inside the log. And divided by, in our denominator, we have for each reactant, the pressure of that reactant divided by the standard pressure to its uh, stoichiometric power. Okay, so as I said, this quantity there is called the reaction quotient. We have the partial derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to extent of reaction is equal to zero when it is at equilibrium. So changing the extent of the reaction some tiny, tiny amount doesn't change the Gibbs energy whenever we're at a minimum in Gibbs energy, the equilibrium value of that Gibbs energy. So if delta Rg equals zero, this means that this plus this has to equal zero, or delta Rg g naught is equal to minus RT times the natural log of Q at equilibrium. So the standard Gibbs energy is equal to minus gas constant times temperature times the natural log of, of our reaction quotient whenever we are at equilibrium. So whatever the values inside here are at equilibrium. So if we're in units of bar, then the standard pressure is in one bar, is one bar. So we're just dividing by one. So if we use bar for our pressure inside our reaction quotient here, we get the simplified expression where we don't need all these denominators. Okay, so there's a special name for the reaction quotient. That is the value that occurs at equilibrium. That is called the equilibrium constant. Or if it's in terms of the pressures of all the gas particles, we would call that K sub P. So the standard reaction Gibbs energy is equal to minus RT times the natural log of the equilibrium constant. So note that the equilibrium constant is a function of temperature because all of these standard chemical potentials are functions of temperature, but it is not a function of pressure. So changing the pressure of the system will not change the reaction, sorry, will not change the equilibrium constant, but changing the temperature will.